Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is the Elemental Maker, and today we're going to be putting together the Z-axis on our GO704 CNC milling machine. So the first step here was to remove the uh, quill feed, whatever that might be. Hopping onto the uh, three bolts there, just loosening them up before I lower the head. Now you can see I put down a large neoprene mat just to kind of cushion the head and prevent me from damaging the table. There I am removing the three bolts and you know keeping those in a safe place because you are going to reuse those and the large center bolt. Now removing the head you can see here I forgot that little set screw on the right hand side of the mill so I'm taking care of that now. And there you go the head is finally off. Here you just want to remove the baffle. You probably don't even need to remove the lower baffle uh, screws. I definitely could have gotten away with doing my conversion without removing those screws on the lower side, which I don't show here. Uh, but, you know, it's dead simple. It's just two screws you got to remove. And you can see these things are pretty tough to get at. They're, the baffles really kind of fight you the whole way. So uh, just take care. Try not to damage anything. So here we are removing the uh, gib screws. Bottom one's a little tricky to get out. It's just tough to get a good angle on that. And there we go, the gib pops right out. So here you just want to remove the uh, <coughs> column cap, whatever that might actually be called. I used a pair of vice grips to get those uh, spanner nuts off. They were on there pretty tight. I tried using channel locks and they just couldn't cut it. So vice grips uh, for the win there, big time. I kept all the hardware in pretty good order just in case, you know, I, I needed to reuse any of it. I wasn't sure. I ended up not reusing any of it with the uh, the kit that I bought, which is from Arizona Video, the guy's name is. He makes an excellent uh, ball screw conversion kit. So if you're, you know, in the market for doing this conversion, uh, he's a great guy to deal with and really put together an awesome kit, as you'll see shortly. The, the quality in it is excellent. And it's literally just plug and play, which is by far the best part. I shouldn't say that. There still is some clearancing you need to do on the uh, saddle. For the X and Y axis, but for Z axis, it's it's pretty much plug and play, which is fantastic. So here I am removing the uh, original Z feed, I guess you'd call it. I don't really know, but uh, she's in there pretty darn tight. So you can see shortly, I I break out the uh, the persuader. I didn't even need to remove uh, these three bolts here. I actually, after disassembly, I just put that back together. I thought they might have been holding it in. So, uh, here's a persuader. And a couple more gentle taps. She's right out. And there's the ball screw kit from Arizona Video. Now, I don't show it in, in this uh, video, but I did end up taking it apart uh, a couple times just to get everything installed. And it probably would have been a better idea just to not tighten anything down at this point and save that all for the end uh, once, you know, the Z slide and all was actually in place and ready to roll. And one thing I'd recommend when you're putting in the, uh, the Z axis, uh, I guess, holder, uh, I forget the exact name of it at this moment. But the Z-axis uh, connector there that mounts to the ball nut, that mounts to the slide. Uh, definitely use some Loctite there. And I also highly recommend stuffing a towel down into the bottom of the uh, mill column. Because on my first attempt, I actually dropped it. And retrieving that from inside the bottom of the column was a nightmare. Uh, ended up having to use a vacuum with a long extension. and um, Probably not a bad thing because there was quite a bit of uh, dust and all actually inside the column uh, iron dust 
which wouldn't be the best thing to get on your ball screw. So it, it probably worked out better in that I sucked out a lot of that. Here I'm just lubricating the gib. You uh, really want to make sure that thing's well lubricated. And getting it in was a bit of a pain. It, it seemed to uh, kind of bind up on me a little bit in certain places. I don't know if that's because this mill's brand new and the ways just aren't really broken in at this point. Uh, now that I have the Z motor actually mounted and I've run it back and forth a few times, it seems to be much better. But uh, yeah, initially I was getting some major binding. So don't forget your bottom uh, gib screw. I didn't show it in this video, but you want to make sure you put that screw in. And again, just tighten up the uh, column cap there, I guess it would be called. Column head. I don't really know. And she turns pretty freely by hand, so that's a good sign. Just tightening up the uh, Z-slide screws there. And uh, getting that the head actually mounted back onto the Z-slide was a true pain in the butt. Um, definitely have a helper around to, you know, do that with you. It really helps having someone else line the uh, bolts up and it, it'll just save you hours of trying to fiddle with that thing. So tighten everything back down nice and symmetrically. Uh, don't over torque anything. I don't know if there actually are torque specifications but you don't need to go too crazy and make sure you kind of tighten them in that star pattern. Same you do with lug nuts. You want to get a nice even, you know, load distribution. Alright, so here we are putting the uh, head assembly back together, column head assembly back together. Just mounting the Z-axis motor. So I went with the NEMA 34, it's a 1200 ounce inch motor really has a lot of power, a lot of torque to really drive this uh, Z-axis up and down. I was playing with the speeds and feeds last night and achieved some absolutely insane uh, speeds without any issue, no, no motor jumping or uh, skipping or anything. So I really recommend that motor from Automation Technologies. Check out my other video um, if you want to see the assembly of the electronics and exactly what I used. Check it out folks, she is up and running. As you can see I need to adjust my uh, stepper speeds there. It's gruesomely slow. But we have a functioning Z-axis. That's some pretty awesome shit. Also need to reinstall the uh, baffle down below. That's a little bit out of whack. Well, I didn't even hook it up, so yeah, that'd be out of whack. There we go. She's working like a charm. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed the video. Join me in the next one where we're putting together the X and Y axis for this mill. Um, going to be a really fun conversion. We're going to try to do a little bit of clearancing on the Y axis to get a little bit of more travel out of that because this mill is pretty limited for Y travel. Um, so we're going to try to sneak maybe just a, you know, extra inch out of it. Maybe two. We'll see. But uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much.